My name is Jacqueline McGlade and I'm currently the Executive Director of the European Environment Agency. The main reason we really care about the oceans is, in a very simple way, every breath you take is because of the oceans and their health matters not only to the way we live on the planet but also because it provides two-thirds of the protein for many people. It looks after biodiversity. It has so many attributes that really help planet Earth function well. Today, three of the most important threats to the oceans are climate change, the pervasive movement of litter throughout the world's oceans, and of course, the overexploitation of resources. It affects the oceans in two ways. One is through temperature, the oceans are becoming warmer, and that has a particular effect on the chemistry. And what we call ocean acidification <clears throat> is so important because many of the organisms that live in the oceans have a very fragile shape, a very fragile shell that depends upon the pH, the acidity or the alkalinity. As the temperature increases, the oceans become more acidic. And as a result, the food chain built around these little organisms, the plankton, begins to disintegrate as the shells themselves cannot hold themselves together. So the combined effects of climate change are perhaps the most pressing challenge for us. And the worrying concern, of course, is that we have set in train a change that will take a thousand years to really balance out. The second major th challenge for us is to do with litter, marine litter. If you walk along today's beaches in Europe, they're very, very clean, but it's not the case around the world. You find flip-flops, you find plastic, you find so much rubbish actually being washed up onto beaches. But what is a greater challenge is that with the movement of the oceans, with the waves, all that plastic gets broken up into tiny, tiny pieces. And those are absorbed by fish, by the things that we eat, by the whales, so that ultimately we have a lot of contamination that is just literally in the waters and it's all over the world. So marine litter starting on the land is a big, big concern and something that citizens can do a lot about. The final thing is something which is an ending story in some parts of the world but continues and that is the overexploitation of fisheries. We see that through poor practices and poor implementation that many species are now at risk not just sharks, not just whales, but the everyday fish that we consider to be part of our cultures, cod, haddock and other species. So that overexploitation is a real challenge politically, but also biologically. There are three different ways to affect change that will really help address the challenges. Internationally, through the agreements on climate change, we can hope to mitigate the effect on the warming and on the ocean acidification. But we also need international agreements on fishing, fishing outside of the waters that are controlled by states, at the moment is pretty much unregulated. And so one of the crucial international activities, which we're now going to undertake because of the meeting in Rio, is to put in place a strong legal regime to implement enforcement on the high seas. Obviously, it's about making sure that fishermen and also the consumer is aware of those stocks of fish which are sustainably managed and those which are overexploited. And again, it requires national government to intervene to make sure that those species at risk, those habitats at risk, are well looked after. And finally, citizens. Probably one of the most powerful things that we can do is to invoke and invite citizens to participate in helping to clean up the environment. And if you imagine doing beach litter surveys every year around Europe's, uh, Europe's coast, you can see that we do have clean beaches, but that's because people are quite aware. So engaging citizens to pick up litter before it gets into the oceans will be a very powerful modification to, in the end, the quality of life in the seas around us.